Do you know where THC and CBD bind in the brain? Because it is absolutely bonkers how many targets they have. I'm Lex Pelger. I do can education for CV Sciences, and this is a new account, so you can help us out a lot with a follow. We'll start here with what they do with the endocannabinoid system itself. THC binds to the CB1 receptor. That makes sense. CB1 receptor is the one that causes a psychoactive effect. CB2 receptor is the one that's on all the organs of our body and interacts with the immune system. And so CBD, you'll notice, doesn't bind to either of those. It acts as either a weak antagonist or a negative allosteric modulator. An allosteric modulator is one that binds to somewhere else on the receptor and makes other things bind there either more strongly or less strongly. So in this case, if you have a little bit of CBD in your system, THC isn't going to bind there quite as well and helps prevent people from getting way, way too psychoactive an effect. In addition, CBD also inhibits the FA enzyme that you see there. The FA enzyme is the one that breaks down the anandamide neurotransmitter, the first endocannabinoid neurotransmitter ever found, named after ananda, the Sanskrit word for bliss. So basically, CBD lowers the activity of the enzyme that breaks down your bliss neurotransmitter. So that's why it's a good thing. Then you have these G protein coupled receptors here. They may one day be known as CB3 and CB4, but that takes a while for scientists to really nail down. We can see that THC activates both of them and CBD antagonizes both of them. And now we're getting the sexy ones that you all know. These are the serotonin receptors. THC doesn't act on them that much, but you can see CBD does a lot. And the 5H2A1 is the one that is the psychedelic receptor. And so the idea that the cannabinoids may be influencing not only your, your mood and your happiness levels through serotonin, but also the effects of psychedelics makes a lot of sense biochemically. Then another big one, dopamine, our molecule of addiction or learning, depending on how you like to define it. And you can see that CBD activates a D2. And we do know that if you use large, large amounts of CBD, that can be helpful for substance use disorders. Then at the top of every survey about why people are using THC or CBD is that it's for pain. And you look here and you see that they both act at the opioid receptors. So that makes a lot of sense. Now we'll jump down to the GABA receptor, which is a really important one because it's the brain's primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. It helps to calm things down. And while it's not on this chart, THC and CBD also interact with glutamate, which is the brain's primary excitatory neurotransmitter. So THC and CBD can act like a dial to dial up or dial down activity in the brain to help you calm it or not calm it depending on what's needed. Acetylcholine is your fight or flight response. It's a good thing that CBD helps to calm that. Then saving the best for last is these PPAR nuclear receptors on the nucleus of your cells, and they turn on and off genes. And this is huge for all the effects above. When you're adding new molecules in, it can be doing all kinds of positive things. And so I remember seeing one CBD article where the CBD turned on in the brain immune cells over 1,300 genes and turned off over 600. These are all the ways that THC and CBD are doing good for us.